Welcome back to my dark room. Today we're going to be looking at the effects of development and contrast changes in your prints. So if you're a beginner in the dark room, you may not have a full grasp on how changing your development time on your film can affect the overall contrast of the image. And if you do change that, either you underdevelop or you overdevelop, how you can correct for that in the printing and what that affects in the final print. So today we're going to be looking at that exact kind of question. I went out and photographed the same scene multiple times. I then took those pieces of film, brought them into the darkroom, and developed them each for different times. Now I'm using FOMA 100, which is sold as Arista 100 uh, from Freestyle where I purchased it, and my standard developer for that is PMK Pyro. Uh, you can use this with any developer, that just happens to be the one that I use. My normal development time, that is a time that develops the film for a full sunny day in standard contrast, will print well using a number two filter in the enlarger. Okay, so that is my normal development time for a normal contrast scene to produce a normal contrast print on the middle filter or number two. So for me, that's nine minutes. So I then developed uh, eight different sheets all at once and removed them from the developer one minute at a time, starting at six minutes, then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and finally 13 minutes. So my lowest time was about 33% less time than normal. My longest time, almost 50% more time than normal. And it was a full sunny day. I had full sun on the subject and a full range of tones. So when I took this film and I made a print of each photograph, and I went ahead and just chose the shortest time, the normal time, and the longest. No reason to go through the whole range. I took each one and made a print with a number two filter for each one. And the important element in that is along the left side, there's kind of a medium to light medium gray tone. And I want to make sure that was the same across the board. And you can see how the underdeveloped frame has flatter, I would say shadows. So the shadows are raised up quite a bit. They didn't get as dark as the normal development time. And then the overdeveloped frame, these shadows are much, much deeper. So the contrast range is wider on the longer development time, and the contrast range is shorter on the shorter development time. That's pretty standard. Now, what would happen if I adjusted the filtration in the enlarger, making the print, on the shortest time and the longest time? And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So taking the shortest development time, the six minute development time, I made a series of test prints until I found a contrast filter 
that produced the closest approximation of the number two filter on the normal development time image. And what I wanted to see was if I have a negative where the contrast is contracted, so less contrast in the film, and then I increased the uh, filter in the enlarger to pull that back out, what would the aesthetic difference be? So in this case, I went from a two filter to a three and a half filter, and that gave me the approximate equal contrast range. But as you can see from the examples, they are not quite identical. Now, I would say the three was too low and the three, three and a half may be a tad too much, but there's no three and a quarter or three and uh, three eighths or anything like that. I would have to use either split grade printing or the color head in order to get fine tuned contrast. That would be exactly the same. But when we get as close as we can with these filters, we can see that while the black point and the white points may be about equal, how the middle tones are separated from each other can be a little bit different. And I feel like the underdeveloped negative has maybe more separation between shadow and midtones than the normal film on normal uh, filter. So then doing the same technique, I used lower and lower filters to print the overdeveloped negative until I reached again that same contrast range. In this case, I went down to a half filter with the overdeveloped negative. So that went from two to one and a half, one half. So a full uh, grade and a half. And for each of those, so a grade and a half either direction to correct for that development time discrepancy. So that means aesthetically, if you want a little bit more separation, then you would be better off slightly underdeveloping and using a higher contrast filter, as opposed to overdeveloping your film and then using a lower contrast filter. So it's going to uh, take the contrast that's in there and kind of just push it out from the middle and that's what the higher contrast filter does for the paper whereas the lower filters kind of mush them together so you're going to get more of that separation now it doesn't necessarily mean that a fully underdeveloped film or negative is going to give you a good image if you use a higher filter and bear in mind this was 33 percent less time and i only went up to a three and a half so if you're printing pretty commonly at four and a half and five to kind of get good contrast, you're severely underdeveloping your film. You have nowhere to go. Uh, so in that case, develop your film longer, get a longer scale negative to begin with, and you'll have better printing experience. From there, you can tweak things to, to kind of get the aesthetic that you want. And in this case, that's exactly what it is. All three negatives, have a good range of tones in them. All three are fully capable of printing a full range of tones. What I am doing by choosing which uh, developed time negative to print from and then changing the filter is kind of playing with the tonal relationship within the print, but I'm not rescuing anything. That would be severe over or under exposure combined with severe over and under development. So not exactly the same thing. So if you are having to rescue negatives and you find that you're rescuing your negatives on a uh, very common sort of basis, then you, you need to change your methodology when you develop uh, and possibly also when you expose. So check for that as well. In this case, it's merely a aesthetic choice from control of the negative in terms of development time. All of them were exposed equally. Uh, and then choosing the right filter 
to dictate that range of tones within that negative printing experience. So if you are beginning your journey here in the darkroom, this may feel slightly advanced. Uh, if you're an advanced darkroom user, but you've never really decided how you want the aesthetic of your print to go uh, beyond, I've got a good negative, I'm going to make a good print. This may give you some uh, tips on how you can manipulate the relationship of those two uh, to take an intermediate level printing to an advanced level printing. So keep that in mind as well. And of course you can do whatever you want with that information and make your prints any way that you like. So get out there and make some prints. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help support this channel and help me make more uh, lessons like this on printing aesthetics, then you can support either through the membership tab up there at the top or the super thanks down here in the corner. And that helps me get the film, paper, and developer to do such experiments in order to show you what the effects are so you don't have to waste the paper to do it. So thanks again for watching. Get out there and make some really great prints. And we'll see you next time.